If they mean to have a war, let it begin here. And on the peaceful Concord River, embattled farmers fired the shot heard round the world. The school of Nathan Hale, modest schoolmaster, who regretted he had but one life to give for his country. While at Fort Necessity, a 22-year-old colonel named George Washington defeated the French and Indians. Every school child knows about Bunker Hill. And Colonel Prescott, who said, do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes. So now, as always, here in the midst of the peaceful Catskills, men are trained to preserve our peace and defend our way of life. In the heart of a country rich in historical lore stands West Point, the finest military school in all the world. But defense doesn't depend entirely on military men. Wasn't it Napoleon who said, an army travels on its stomach? And soldiers of the soil are at work farming this land of ours in our own American way with the most modern mechanized machines for farming that the world has ever seen. Our American farmers are truly the most powerful mechanized army for the larder of democracy. Here is an MM tractor and Unimower making hay, which will help produce milk, butter, cheese, and beef. In New York and all other states, modern machines like this can get all farm jobs done with fewer hands in less time and at lower cost. Still in New York, we see a two-row MM cultivator and Universal R tractor. And what's this they're working in? Beans, the good old standby. That's a universal American food. tractor putting a two-row cultivator to chasing weeds away on this farm near Avon, New York. Still another New York farm with an older MM tractor and MM harvester working together in perfect harmony, even after years of hard work. It pays to keep machines in good repair. And so to Pennsylvania, where this standard U brings the harvest home right in this farmer's barn. In Pennsylvania also, MM tractors and unimowers are doing their bit to make the larder of democracy secure. Five-year-old Gene Sullenberger is hauling hay with an R tractor and keeps the loader and two men busy. This does show how simple it is to drive an MM tractor, but we don't recommend youngsters for this job, so be careful, Gene. Older methods are still used, but the power is modern on the Henry Thrush Farm in Pennsylvania. This Harvester 69 with sacking attachment and engine drive makes a tough job easy. Look how that husky lad tosses those heavy sacks. And his choice of harvesting equipment proves he has brains as well as brawn. As long as we're so close, it would be too bad to pass up a visit to Annapolis, where the spirit of John Paul Jones hovers over this academy and gives his blessing to the future officers of our Navy, who will defend our America. Let's take a side trip and see the famous natural bridge in Kentucky. The bridge is a massive natural stone formation, 125 feet long, 75 feet high, and 35 feet wide, connecting two mountain ridges. The bridge is estimated to contain more than 7,500 tons of rock. Hurry up, let's thumb a ride on this blimp. 
This is a pigeon's eye view of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Kindly refrain from dropping banana peels on the parade grounds while we see Fort Bragg from an army blimp. Located in the hills of North Carolina, the reservation contains 122,000 acres, and there are 55,000 of Uncle Sam's new trainees learning modern defense here. Fort Bragg is typical of the neat, clean camps throughout our land. Eight-foot, straw-foot. Pick it up, boys. These selectees are being taught to shoot straight. Let's not get too close. Instructions in life-saving and swimming are part of the necessary training for good soldiers. Brother Noah could have gotten some good ideas from these assault boats of the 15th Engineers Battalion. Bet you they're going in to get some of those beans we saw being cultivated a while ago. boys got out from under. Back to the farm. This MMR tractor is on the job with a two-disc MM plow. North or south, you'll find modern MM machines helping to replace men needed elsewhere in our defense effort. This MMR tractor with two-row duchess planter is putting in cotton accurately at uniform depth. Well, that cotton grew fast. A Minneapolis Moline tractor with two-row cultivator keeps it clean. And now, four rows at a time. A cultivator with fertilizer attachment taking care of four rows of tall cotton with a vision line universal Z tractor furnishing the power. The power lift makes for easy turns and fast work. The growing of fiber is as important as food. MM engines pump water for the irrigation so essential to rice growing in Arkansas and Louisiana rice fields. Throughout the South, this is a common sight. Four row planters on MM cultivator frames and the whole business attached to a universal U or Z tractor. Sure enough, we're at the old city gates of St. Augustine, Florida, our oldest city. And here is the oldest schoolhouse in the United States, 400 years old. house in the United States. Over it waves the four flags signifying the reign of four different governments. The Fountain of Youth, discovered by Ponce de Leon in 1513. He was sure that somewhere in this charming land of ours he would find waters to restore his youth. Marion, the oldest fort standing in the United States, was begun in 1672 and completed in 1756. If those thick walls could talk, what tales they could tell. Especially this execution wall. Those bullet scars tell a story without words. Now we're at Silver Springs, near Ocala, Florida. A vision-lined lake. Note the easy operation of this streamlined diving machine. The easy turns, the power lift. And if we were speaking of farm machinery, her smooth, powerful action would remind us of MM high compression tractors.
Here is the world's largest tangerine grove near Orlando, Florida. And now we're picking Florida oranges nearby. The dress may date back to before the war between the states. But the girl in it is as up to the minute as a prairie gold M.M. tractor working in the orange groves and vegetable fields of Florida. Miami, two million visitors a year, a busy metropolis the year round. Miami Beach, the winter capital of many Americans. editor said, Miami is the new boundary line between North and South America. A great fleet of giant clippers carry 50,000 air passengers a year to and from Latin America. Here's one, home from a southern neighbor. we're near another army camp. Must be Camp Shelby because we are near Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Jeeps, blitz buggies, they have many different names. Some call them bouncing sardine cans on wheels. Hills and dales all look alike to them and they get a lot of our soldiers where they want to go in a hurry. them in the bushes and make them look like what they're not. Wonder what this fellow is saying. Hope he isn't calling us names. Looks like the bushes are exploding. But here, American soldiers are trained to be the best marksmen in the world. Camp Shelby, the second largest army camp in the land, where 52,000 men are undergoing intensive training for the defense of this land of liberty. bicycles are messengers and more than that. They must be able to ride through any kind of country no matter how rough or tough. One, two, touch your toes with your nose. Uncle Sam soldiers keep in tip-top shape. The magic carpet of film makes it possible to cover great distances in a short time. We're traveling northward on the Mississippi. On a side trip to New Salem Village in Illinois, we see it restored as it was when a gangling youth named Abraham Lincoln ran a general store and dreamed dreams that were to have a tremendous influence on our American ways. Here, Lincoln met Ann Rutledge, his first sweetheart, and though she died here before young Lincoln left the village, her influence on him was profound. operated. Today, as always, young rural boys are pioneering progress. Here, a 12-year-old boy proves that a Z-tractor is easy to operate. Plowing is surely the groundwork of defense. 
In Ohio, a U tractor with a four row MM check planter puts the corn in accurately at uniform depth. Manure helps keep the land fertile. This Moline spreader, an MM tractor with cab, makes a usually unpleasant job easy. Corn is a fundamental defense crop. This MM Model D corn sheller gets the corn off the cobs in a business-like manner, up to 300 bushels an hour. Over in Indiana, we find an R tractor with a two-row cultivator pepping up a field of sargo. Keeping the weeds out saves the plant food for the crop. farm, a Harvester 69 is bringing home the wheat. Once over and it's all over. Sure saves time and money. Notice the caressing action of this MM hay loader. Its gentle action saves the fine, valuable leaves for feed. Taylor Farm in Indiana, two MMR tractors and 69 harvesters are harvesting a real wheat crop. Economical production of food with less help is an essential part of our defense program. Harvester 69 are harvesting oats. The Harvester 69 gets the harvest done on time. It may wind up at the bowl game or at the circus, but this popcorn is getting a good start. This four-row MM cultivator and tractor keep it clean. It's not good business to have an extra passenger on a tractor, but since the crop is popcorn, we'll probably have to excuse this boy's hitchhiking. From Indiana to Michigan farmland. Here, a Universal U tractor and a Harvester 69 are harvesting wheat on the Abrams farm at Climax, Michigan, near the place where the world's first combine was used. You don't have to have tabletop land for MM machinery. Look at this MM tractor in Harvester 69 working like billy goats in hilly oats. Here at Climax is the monument to Hiram Moore, who in 1838 successfully operated the first combine. Later models were shipped around the Horn to California to harvest crops on the West Coast. Climax also was where the first rural free delivery mail route was inaugurated. Another Michigan farm and another Harvester 69. Here we are with a Universal R cultivating potatoes, a favorite food of Americans. out before this combination of Universal R tractor and an MM harvester. This MM spreader, powered by hay burners, spreads marl quickly and evenly. For easy loading, it's the lowest spreader built, and two horses easily pull it. Michigan celery is famous food. MM machines help it get to your table fresh and good. This wildlife research station and waterfowl sanctuary was given to Michigan State College by W.K. Kellogg, famous processor of farm cereals. 
Professor Swan is giving submarine lessons. Michigan, too, has its scenic beauty spots. This one is on the St. Joseph River. Lake Michigan to Wisconsin and Illinois, two contended cows calmly doing their bit in the national defense effort. Vision-lined MM tractors and Moline monitor drills make putting the feed in accurately at uniform depth an easy matter. Shell and DeKalb, we find men of the California Packing Corporation harvesting peas. These peas will be canned and sold under the famous Del Monte trademark. These folks own over 270 MM tractors. Many of them shown here have been on the job day in and day out for years. And here are the peas, sweet and tender, whole and unbruised. MM tractors go at just the right speed for the loaders without slipping the clutch or stopping. Peas must be harvested at precisely the right time or quality would be reduced and the loss tremendous. That's why dependable MM power is used. Universal R belongs to the Del Monte fleet and is cultivating baby lima beans, four rows at a time. Still on the Del Monte farms, this may look like another cultivator at work, but it is actually one of the first steps in making pumpkin pies. It's a field of pumpkins. Without bees, there would be no pumpkins. Bees make honey too, but because they carry pollen from plant to plant, 60 to 70 tons of pumpkins per acre are produced. Between Del Monte Farms, we meet this Angus bull, owned by the Pierce Farm, and he's a national champion. Two more MM tractors of the California Packing Corporation's fleet doing a very tidy job of housekeeping in sweet corn with four-row cultivators. All these tractors belong to the world's largest farm fleet of over 270. Since 1919, the favorite of these men who produce fine Del Monte foods for your table. Individual farmers know of the record of the world's largest tractor fleet and the performance of MM tractors everywhere. So here's a man with a Z tractor with a field in which we can't find a weed. Nothing corny about the way this MM corn sheller is shelling 1,300 bushels an hour. If we could only grow it as fast as this outfit can shell it. machine and getting it on the market. Easy to get from job to job. Nashua, Iowa. There's a church in the valley by the wildwood. No lovelier spot in the vale. No place is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the vale.
This M.M. Wide Cut Harrow gets a lot of ground ready for a crop in a single day. It's angled and straightened, folded and unfolded by tractor power. An Iowa scene wouldn't be an Iowa scene without corn. This is a universal U tractor and four-row cultivator trimming the weeds out. Yes, another fleet of M.M. tractors. Here are the Fitzloff boys at Spencer, Iowa, with three M.M. tractors, cultivating corn and taking the weeds out of their potatoes in stride. On to Minnesota. No, that's not a silo. It's the famous old round tower at Fort Snelling near the Twin Cities. Headquarters at Fort Snelling, one of the most scenic army posts in all North America. Trainees from all over the Middle West come to Fort Snelling to become good soldiers. look different and interesting. Now, if you'll just remain seated, we'll have the boys put on a review for you, with generals and colonels and everything necessary to the conduct of a proper review. steel for hangars and M.M. tractors are important to many phases of our defense activities. M.M. tractors serve the Army and Navy on many jobs. These huge birds are the eyes of the Navy. At Wool Chamberlain Field near Minneapolis, the Navy has an air base and training field for the defense of America. These fledglings for Uncle Sam are being inspected. Many of the boys are getting their first flying lessons here. on a lake near Minneapolis. In the heart of Minneapolis, Lake Calhoun sailors are doing their stuff in sailboats. state in the Union, they come to Minnesota each year to fish. They catch them, too, but there always seems to be plenty left for the next fellow. More fishermen and more fish. This goes on and on, and no one ever seems to tire of it. There's a nice catch. Young America never changes. Give an American boy a pole, some string, and bent pin, and he'll get fish. Think he won't? What kind of fishing do you prefer? You can have most any variety in Minnesota. We're way up north in Superior National Forest now, on Knife River. Over 10,000 lakes in Minnesota, and fish for all in every lake. 
This must be what a fisherman expects heaven to be like. Northern Minnesota produces most of America's iron ore. Here's the raw material for tractors and tanks, corn shellers and cannons, battleships and beat tools. Few places in the world match the rugged beauty of the north shore of Lake Superior. Duluth, the zenith city, made famous by Proctor Knott as one of the finest and busiest harbors in the world. Here, Minnesota's iron ore starts by boat for eastern steel mills. In Minneapolis, at the automotive plant of Minneapolis Moline, tractors are being loaded for shipment to all corners of the Americas and the world. are becoming familiar to Army men all over the United States. They go where they are pointed, and nothing seems to stop them. Over stumps and over rocks they go. constitute no hazard at all. It's hay time in Minnesota, heading hay. Now, this combination MM tether and side delivery rake is gently forming windrows. And now, a Minneapolis Moline hay loader carefully lifts the crop and gently puts it on the rack for feed for sheep and cattle. Indirectly, hay is food for us all. For hillside plowing to prevent erosion, a two-way MM plow like this does its part to preserve our land. Cultivating corn with a two-row MM cultivator and universal R tractor. Machinery like this combs the weeds out of the fields with ease. This isn't a race between MM tractors. They're just smoothing the racetrack at the Minnesota State Fair. change and the world moves on, but a horse race is still a horse race. Lives there a man with soul so dead who ne'er to himself has said, come on lightning. In Memorial Stadium at the University of Minnesota, 55,000 football fans watch Minnesota play a Big Ten opponent. The Golden Gophers, the football team that has made winning a habit. again. Notice the re-cleaner attachment on this Harvester 69, operating on the hillsides along the Mississippi near Red Wing, Minnesota. M.M. introduced track 
tractors to burn butane gas to save money for farmers. This Universal U is cooperating with a two-row MM Husker. U tractor burning butane and pulling a four disc MM plow. A good job. For smaller acreages, an ideal arrangement is a universal R tractor and a one row MM corn husker. Attach a four-row beet and bean planter, and a delicate job is done quickly and well. Another dependable combination, a Minneapolis Moline Z tractor and a six-row beet and bean planter at work in the Red River Valley of the North. Into the beet fields of North Dakota, where an R tractor with single front wheel teams up with a two-row MM beet puller. Dakota, this monument marks the geographical center of North America. And not so far away, the beloved Theodore Roosevelt ranched in his younger days, his good old rough riding days. The weird and fascinating formations are now included in Roosevelt National Park. to get his work done on time. Excellent roads lead us to the Black Hills of South Dakota, and beautiful Spearfish Canyon is one of the first places of interest. High on the side of Mount Rushmore, Gutson Borglum, the famous sculptor, created an eternal memorial to American men worthy of such a tribute. They do things in a big way here. Five bottoms. Good soil, but tough to turn over. But not for this MMGT tractor and disc plow. A universal U with eight row Lister dammer prepares this land to hold the moisture and resist soil blowing. A Minneapolis Moline thresher and R tractor. Another paradise for fishermen. The Black Hills country is drawing visitors to South Dakota by the thousands. time in Deadwood. The Wild West will always be wild and colorful. Cowboys throw the bull before, during, and after the rodeo. They say 
way that South Dakota furnishes many sailors for our Navy. No wonder. The pitching deck of a battleship could hold no terrors for anyone who has been on one of these bucking broncos. Thing. In the wild old Deadwood days, rope had other uses. Roads out west are hard to beat. We approach Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, on the Red Lodge Cook City Highway. One of the highest roads in the world, but it's broad and smooth. And the beautiful scenery is appreciated by the folks in the back seat. these hold-up bears in Yellowstone Park, but they have come to know that some people in cars are always good for a handout. Seeing Yellowstone wouldn't be complete without old faithful Geyser. photographed views in America is this one of the lower fall of the Yellowstone River from Artist Point. We'll take a last look around Yellowstone Canyon and start for Montana. Leaving by way of Golden Gate. men still on guard at the spot where they fell in the battle at Little Bighorn, probably the most famous single Indian battle in American history. In 1876, 260 United States cavalrymen were all killed in a battle that lasted just 25 minutes. Introducing Ed Kopeck of Hardin, Montana, said to be the largest individual wheat grower in the United States. He counts his acres by the thousands. Mr. Kopeck does things in the modern American way, and his MM tractors and harvesters are kept busy on his ranch. Mr. Kopeck's grain bins are roofed as the grain is brought in. Two of these bins, each 500 feet long, hold 80,000 bushels apiece. Kopex 1700 hogs. This bridge at Kalispell is built with MM structural steel. Beautiful scenery around Kalispell. And while working his MM tractor in Unamore, this youngster admires the scenery. This R tractor and Spring Tooth Herald are preparing a bed for, well, of all things, canary seed. This Montana farm is entirely equipped with MM machinery. A Z tractor and junior harvester on the job in mountain bordered acres. high school lad on this M.M. Harvester is a hero. In spite of a paralyzed right arm, he saved two young boys from drowning in an angry mountain river. This Montana farmer has found his Z tractor in Harvester 69 give him ideal equipment for harvesting peas for seed. these 
peas. They look good enough for pea soup, but they're seed for more peas for more pea soup. And so it goes on. A mixture of old and new methods. A harvester 69 drawn by horses. They certainly do get grand crops in Montana. Montana is famous for sheep ranching. This flock is grazing near a monument marking the far northwestern point to which Lewis and Clark penetrated in 1806. many farms in Montana equipped with a Minneapolis Moline tractor and M.M. Wheatland plow. These M.M. plows are the world's most popular. An M.M. GT tractor and 12-foot harvester bringing the harvest home where strip farming is the best method. Food for a hungry world. Montana, Pat Murphy and his standard Z tractor and Harrow are at work preparing a seed bed. Before we leave Montana, let's stop a little while at Glacier Park. From a perfect highway, we pass beautiful Lake McDonald. Many of these scenes are world famous. The rugged rocky garden wall. Many Glacier Hotel on Swift Current Lake. These guests are setting out on a saddle tour. How do you do? And our parting glimpse is of Swift Current Falls. to Washington, we pass through Idaho and see a Minneapolis Moline R tractor with cab and a unimower at work. Grand Coulee Dam on the Columbia River in Washington is the most massive man-made structure in the world. Three times bigger than the largest Egyptian pyramid, it contains enough concrete to make two 16-foot highways from coast to coast. It creates a lake 151 miles long and will eventually reclaim 1,200,000 acres of land. More MM tractors working for the California Packing Corporation. This time they're hauling corn at the cannery at Toppenish, Washington. Rainier National Park, dominated by Ice Lock Mount Rainier, the patriarch of the Cascade Range. It towers almost three miles into the air. The Indians named it the mountain that was God, for it literally pierced the sky. On the mountainside, brilliant 
brilliant flowers add a blaze of color approaching to the very edge of the glacier. It's often called the land where flowers and glaciers meet. American defense crop. The logging industry in Washington is a gigantic business. wonders. The old Oregon Trail, famous in song and story, is now a broad paved highway. On one of the finest roadways in the world, we follow the scenic Columbia River. Teasel into the dry house. Teasel is used to raise the nap on cloth. No good substitute yet found. A standard Z tractor with unitiller working in hops on the Davidson farm near St. Paul, Oregon. There's MM modern machinery for all needs and crops. crop of Timothy hay being barbered neatly. Another M.M. Unimore and tractor give this vetch crop a permanent wave. And look at that scenery in the background. Moline tractor in a Harvester 69 going through the rye grass. Once through and the seeds are in the sack. Turning southward to California, we see the second largest dam in the world. This one is the Shasta Dam on the Sacramento River in Northern California. These dams give the farmers water for crops and furnish power all over this land of ours. enough to drive an automobile through, that is a big tree. The Golden Gate Bridge at San Francisco, across the entrance of one of the world's finest harbors, is the longest single suspension bridge in the world. San Francisco's famous new bridge over Oakland Bay, another engineering miracle. China Clipper finishing its 8,000 mile hop from the Orient.
commercial airplanes will rule the skies and keep our land forever free. These clipper ships symbolize the progress already made along these lines. From clippers to winter peas, and a couple of Z tractors with four row cultivators keeping the weeds out. As boys, we considered mustard plants as weeds, though we liked mustard on hot dogs. But here, they're harvesting mustard with an MM harvester, so we'll have mustard for all our needs. This MM tractor with a two-way plow is going deep, turning under a barley crop. And notice the inspector following along to check up on the job. And now we'll mow some alfalfa to later give us better beef, more butter, more eggs. These flowers are wild. But this MMR tractor with two bottom MM plow will tame them down. On Joe Caton's farm near Merced, this universal R with single front wheel is plowing land to grow sweet potatoes. Caton's charming daughter is cultivating potatoes, and she handles this R tractor capably. Another enormous project in a great reclamation program is Friant Dam. The San Joaquin River flows out of the foothills of the Sierra Nevada Range, and about 20 miles from Fresno, Friant Dam is being built. This dam with its canals will reclaim some 200,000 acres of land where water has been hard to get. This is the valley famous for its grapes, raisins, and cotton. Through a tunnel, we 
approach Yosemite National Park, and a glacial-carved valley unfolds before us. We follow the Merced River and see that split mountain called Half Dome. Yosemite Falls drops 1,430 feet in the upper cascade alone, and two more cascades bring the total height of fall to nearly a half mile. Camp Roberts, a few miles out of Paso Robles, California, has approximately 25,000 men mostly from the Midwest. They're housed in neat two-story wooden barracks. They have excellent hospital facilities, movie theaters, and many churches. If you have a son or a brother in one of these modern camps, you can be sure he's well taken care of. are straight shooters, and this is true both literally and figuratively. Although there are thousands of men, each one receives personal supervision and instruction. rigging, the target is brought in for examination without any chance of accident. Pumping water for irrigation purposes is an important job in California. MM engines are used for this work because they provide a steady flow and seldom need attention. giving water for thirsty crops. An old lettuce bed being disked under with the famous new MM Tandem Harrow that doesn't dig in on turns and penetrates evenly. Another common use for MM engines, furnishing power at oil refineries. Here again, steady economical service without stoppage is essential. One of the world's greatest oil fields is located right on the Pacific Ocean below Los Angeles. You can see the Pacific Ocean in the background, and here again you find MM engines doing a steady, dependable job without fuss or trouble. Grauman's Chinese Theater, famous for movie premieres. And here's Hollywood from the hills. Behind these motion picture studio walls are battleships and ghost towns, African villages and smart drawing rooms. Russian soldiers chat and swap cigarettes with Brazilian aristocrats. Here is made glamour and make-believe that to the world represents Hollywood. we don't connect ice skating with California. But here at the Westwood Tropical Ice Gardens in Hollywood, skating is year-round pleasure. MM engines power the refrigeration machinery for many of these rinks, dairies, and cold storage plants. They run continuously, making almost unbelievable records. grace and rhythm, and MM engines make all this possible. California's missions date back to the days when California was Spanish territory. San Fernando Mission at Los Angeles was already old when some fellows in Boston steeped up a tea party.
favorite and profitable pastime in California is picking and packing oranges. With the help of modern machinery, they produce wonderful crops. Believe it or not, M.M. Prairie Gold tractors help produce these vitamins of health. Here are some of the boys of Camp Hahn returning from anti-aircraft gun practice. Camp Hahn, another modern army camp in California near Riverside, accommodates 10,000 trainees. It's an anti-aircraft training center, and target practice with long-range guns is usually conducted on the Mojave Desert. eagerly wait for the daily mail to be distributed, and do they like to get a letter from home? And so, into the mess hall go the best-fed soldiers in the world. The B-19, world's largest bomber, gets a final tuning up. The B-19 can fly from California to England, round trip, without stopping to refuel. From wingtip to wingtip, it spreads over 300 feet, equal to the width of a city block. of the tail rudder is about equal to the height of a four-story building. The Wonderland of Rocks in Chiricahua National Park in Arizona is an awe-inspiring sight. This immense area a weirdly magnificent stone formations is one of the least known of America's natural wonders. But its fame is spreading and each year sees more visitors come here. Pacific Railroad, we come to Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico, where, deep underground, we see what seems to be another world. Here, strange limestone formations that seem to defy the laws of gravity are the result of hundreds of thousands of years of patient effort on the part of Mother Nature. Nevada is one of the greatest engineering projects in the world. A 45-foot highway runs across the top of the dam, 700 feet above the base. highest dams raises the level of the Colorado River 580 feet to form Lake Mead, a 200 square mile reservoir, the largest man-made body of water in the world. In 1858, a Mormon scout discovered Zion Canyon in southwestern Utah. Angel's Landing stands out in a valley whose walls blaze with color. The three patriarchs, high above Pine Creek Canyon, in southwestern Utah, we also see Bryce Canyon, where wind, water, and temperature changes have created fantastic formations. Indians named these formations Red Rock Standing Up Like Men. by Iran. 
erosion alone has laid bare millions of years of the history of the Earth. And this marvel of natural engineering is called the Grand Canyon. Twelve miles across, there are entire ranges of mile-high mountains within the labyrinth of canyons below. Light reflections make every view of the Grand Canyon different, and its ever-changing magnificence hushes the onlooker into an awed silence. Colorado and Nebraska next, and we get there just in time to admire the work of a powerful GT tractor and Wheatland disc plow. With feeding attachments, this time-saving MM outfit plows the ground and sows the feed in one trip over the field. We've seen many big dams, so now let's see some fascinating MM dammers at work. This universal R tractor and two or four row Lister dammer makes thousands of dams a year to do an important defense job against drought and wind erosion. of your heart, a fitting spot in which to turn loose the very latest nine-foot MM harvester. The large grain tank will soon be filled with golden grain and much needed in these days to feed a hungry world. These MM harvesters have features no other combines have. A universal U and the last word in 12-foot MM harvesters. It may be of interest to know that since 1934, MM 12-foot harvesters have been the world's largest sellers in that size. And now they're built better than ever with many new features. sure for them continued leadership in the harvesting world. Missouri, too, has outstanding grain crops. And near St. Joseph, a Minneapolis Moline tractor and new 12-foot MM harvester are hustling right along. to some farmers, but not to this owner of a Z tractor and MM Harvester 69. The farmer says this crop could not have been harvested without this equipment. Crops and savings are important these days. Soybeans are an important defense crop, and MM Harvesters in all sizes are the mighty masters of soybean harvesting. Now we're in San Antonio in the great state of Texas. Here at the Alamo, the cradle of Texas liberty, fought the great pioneers whose names today are legends familiar to every Texan. The 
San Jose Mission near San Antonio was founded in 1720. In those days, Texas was under the jurisdiction of Spain. Because of its symmetry and beauty, San Jose is referred to as the Queen of the Missions. Here in the great Southwest, as everywhere in our America, we'll see many MM machines and tractors at work. You'll see listers, middle breakers, cultivators in cotton, MM Wheatland disc plows, regular disc plows and field cultivators. So let us remember that agriculture is the world's most important industry. In the Americas, farming is not only the most important industry, it is also far ahead of all the world in development and mechanization. Two products, food and fiber, make all other industries dependent on our farmers. For America alone, our farmer's seed and soil must produce over 390 million square meals a day and many other vital things used by everyone every day. By hard, intelligent work and the use of modern machinery, American farmers have attained the highest standard of living ever achieved by any agricultural people. And more progress has been made along this line in the last 50 years than in all the ages before. So let us remember that farming in our own American way plays a vital part in our defense efforts and in the solution of coming world problems. We'll keep our machines in good repair and our powder dry. We'll invest in defense bonds and saving stamps instead of buying silk shirts and other non-essentials. Eventually comes the great moment when the wings are handed out and a new group of American eagles are ready to patrol the skies for all of us. The planes are ready and the new pilots are busy studying their various assignments and instructions. Parachutes are put on, harness tested, and into the ships they climb. enjoy security and freedom forevermore in this land of ours. 